Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Selection and Initiation. This is Lecture C. The objectives for project selection and initiation are identify the key elements of a project environment and HIT landscape, outline the needs for projects, how and why they are selected and initiated, construct a project charter, identify project stakeholders, generate a stakeholder register. We will be focusing on the last three objectives during Lecture C. The project charter is a record of why the project was undertaken in the first place. The business case for the project can be part of the project charter. The business case presents the business objective for this project. It answers questions such as, what is it, in business terms, that motivates you to undertake the project? What are alternative approaches? What is the recommended approach? What are some of the assumptions and risk issues? What is the project going to do in terms of benefits compared to the cost of the project itself? This is the place where you can have a return on investment and cost-benefit analysis consideration as part of the business case. There needs to be some reason for undertaking this project that improves your operation. It improves the business. This is the place where those kinds of discussions are conducted and those kinds of analysis are included. Quantifying benefits is a challenge because there are spillover effects from this project to other projects and from system to system, but this is your best statement to justify the health IT project in business terms. The business case gives a strong foundation to your project. The clearer you are with your business case and how it affects your project, the easier for you to get funding for your project. This slide shows a list of possible stakeholders. Some stakeholders who have a strong stake in your project include the customer and the users of the processes, services, and systems that result from your project, including the champion and sponsor. The intention of this list is to encourage you to think about all those who may be stakeholders. Remember, the stakeholder is an individual or organization that is affected either positively or negatively by the project or the outcomes of the project. When you are putting together your stakeholder list, include everyone you can think of. You can always ask your sponsor for clarification whether a particular role has a part in your project. Here is a scenario for a real project that involves an outpatient clinical facility and the current ordering system regarding prescriptions. Examine this project description and identify the stakeholders and the roles they might play in your project. Think of your own experience when you are dealing with your own physician. Let's say he has put you on medication for high blood pressure. You now need to have that prescription refilled. You call the physician's office. Because of e-prescribing, the physician can go to his computer, write the prescription, and send it electronically to your pharmacy. You no longer have to call the physician, go to the physician's office, pick up a piece of paper, take it to the pharmacy, wait until the medication has been filled before you can take the medication. All those early steps between calling and picking up the medication at the pharmacy have been eliminated with e-prescribing.
The stakeholder register is a key deliverable during project initiation. The key activity so far has been to identify the stakeholders, recognize the possible roles they will play in your project, and understand the incredible range of possibilities for individuals involved in the project. When you have identified stakeholders and their responsibilities, capture that information and record it in the stakeholder register. These documents should be electronic documents that are easy to revise and keep current. This is the opportunity for you to record the results of your stakeholder identification activity as you just did, for example, in the e-prescribing project. Then use it during the project so it is a common sense way to capture all the relevant information about stakeholders in one place, so it is not in separate documents or in random notes that you or others may have on your team. The register is prepared during the early stages of the project and serves as a valuable tool throughout the project, helping you manage stakeholders and their expectations. Now that you have identified your stakeholders and you have clarified them with your sponsor, it is time to put some actual roles and understanding behind who they are and how they will help you with your project. Their expectations need to be managed as well as everyone else's on the project. Let's look at some of the elements that might be in a stakeholder register. This slide shows two major kinds of information. The first set of information is identification information, which consists of the basics, such as contact information, names, organizations, and the important role that they are playing in the project. The other set of information is management information. The register is a key deliverable for you. It's important to keep it current because the information will change. New information will become available. There will be new users, new organizations, new individuals who will come into play during the project. So this is a living document. As a project manager, you will exercise judgment in terms of whether the register contains only basic and objective information, such as the section on identification, or whether you want to use this register to include more sensitive information, such as listed in the management information section. The sensitivity of the information is critical. An example of sensitive information is characterized in the level of influence an individual has on the project. If the register is meant to be a useful internal document for you and your project team, the access to it must be controlled if it is providing support to your effort. In that sense, if you have that access control, you can use it as a way to provide important background information. An example of information that can be useful in terms of managing stakeholders and their expectations is whether individuals on your project team may have personal relationships or prior professional relationships with customer representatives. Does that mean having this team member more visible in some meetings with the customer? It can actually be helpful to build trust between the customer and your team because of this relationship. Keep in mind, if documents like this are part of projects funded by government agencies, the stakeholder register may be open to being accessed by way of the Freedom of Information Act. Keep in mind the sensitivity of any information that you include.
We have discussed identifying stakeholders and recording that information in a stakeholder register. The importance of stakeholders in success of projects is so critical that there is also something called the stakeholder management strategy. It might, at first, appear to be excessive in terms of talking about an entire strategy for managing stakeholders, but it should be indicative of the importance of stakeholders to determining whether projects are successful or not. The objective of a stakeholder management strategy is to define your approach to managing different stakeholders during the project life cycle and maximize the support from stakeholders and minimize any disruptive actions they might have on the project. Like every project, every stakeholder is unique. You must plan for each stakeholder as a separate entity. Some of the things that you will use, such as communication, will be mandated by your organization or government. It is important to decide the best way to engage stakeholders for the success of the project. To develop a stakeholder strategy for each individual stakeholder, it is important for you to spend some time to consider with your project team, project champion, and senior management how this project affects this particular stakeholder. What will he consider to be a successful outcome? It is important to consider the project from the points of view of the stakeholders. They have different views of the project and their notions of success are expected to differ. Your understanding of those views can be critical for you going forward. How critical are these stakeholders to project continuity, such as supplying funding? Maybe the stakeholders are supplying team members. They may be helping you to staff your project. Are they involved in decision making for acceptance of deliverables? Will they be key people in determining whether your resulting outcomes like services, processes, systems and products will be acceptable or not? What is the best way to communicate with them? There is no substitute for asking stakeholders directly, how do you want to be kept informed of progress on the project? It can be annoying if there is excessive communication, especially if it is not the way the stakeholder wants to communicate with you. The frequency timing, nature, and method used for communication with the stakeholder can be critical in establishing a good rapport and building trust. There can be cases where some stakeholders want a lot of visibility into the project with a lot of reports and a lot of communications, and other times when they are content to get periodic updates. Here is a good place where you can use other people's strategies in communicating with your stakeholders. Look at your organizational culture and see whether it is a formal or informal process and tailor your communications to your stakeholders, not only to them, but also to your organization.
This is a good opportunity to follow up on the discussion about stakeholders and revisit the e-prescribing project discussed earlier. Discuss stakeholder management in terms of the stakeholders you identified earlier for that project. What will your strategy be for managing those stakeholders? Consider some of those questions we just discussed as a guide to what stakeholder management means. Review each question while considering each stakeholder in turn. This will help frame stakeholder management strategy for you for this project. In health IT projects, it's important to respect the critical health mission of all the organizations as you develop your strategy. The critical activities for doctors and nurses are patient care and anything that may affect that. Their time is valuable, so communication about health IT projects needs to be concise and delivered according to their preferences. An important part of project initiation, in addition to a project charter and a stakeholder register, is the project kickoff meeting. This is the time to gain support for the project and launch it in a strong and effective way. It is a way for you to engage stakeholders so they can resolve any questions or issues they may have before the project planning takes place. The primary purpose of this meeting is to engage stakeholders. The project kickoff meeting raises visibility for the project throughout the organization. It will bring a lot of awareness to those who may be only peripherally involved. It is important to follow guidelines for effective meeting management. This, after all, is a meeting and so those meeting facilitation skills are valuable. The kickoff meeting may involve participants both in person and online. It can be very effective to have a meeting that involves trained facilitators who are very effective and skilled at facilitation. Work with your sponsor and your customers to come up with an effective agenda. It can be very effective to have a PowerPoint slide displayed during the meeting to provide a focus for the attendees. Even very basic issues of organization of the meeting will deserve your attention. For example, if there are only a few participants, you may not want to have a formal presentation. Instead, conduct the meeting around a conference table as a way to encourage discussion and keep all the participants on the same level as the project team. Use your project charter as a basis for this meeting. Here are some more guidelines for a successful meeting. 
You want the outcome of the meeting to be that all stakeholders have confidence in your team and your plans to manage a successful project. A key factor in planning the meeting is the extent to which there is agreement among the stakeholders on various aspects of the project. For example, the project approach, the timelines, the resulting outcomes that are planned, and so on. It is possible that this is the first time the stakeholders have been in the same room to discuss the project. This is the time to resolve any strong differences of opinion among the stakeholders. But there may be issues that are now discussed for the first time among the stakeholders because it is the first time they are meeting. So it is important to allow time for stakeholders to introduce themselves and meet each other and clarify roles and responsibilities and make sure those are all clear. Discuss the organizational structure of your team. Draw upon those elements on the project charter as a reference. Dedicate a staff person to support the meeting by recording decisions made. There will be issues that arise during a project kickoff meeting that are simply not practical to resolve during the meeting itself. They need to be tabled for future discussion. When issues arise like this, record the issue, discuss it, state it clearly, and make sure there are assignments to individuals to pursue the issue offline and even to a proposed date when those individuals will report back to the larger group. Send out notes of the meeting to the participants to confirm any decisions that were made or any activities that were discussed during the meeting. This concludes Lecture C of Project Selection and Initiation. In summary, project selection activities occur before a project is approved for implementation and may be just in the idea stage. It is important when considering projects for selection that they are weighed based on their contribution toward achieving goals laid out by a strategic plan. In addition, projects should be selected based on their fit with organizational project environment and health IT landscape. Project initiation activities occur in the beginning of the project, early in whatever life cycle you have chosen. Starting at the project right can set you on a strong path to project success. Some of the key elements we discussed are the importance of a project charter to authorize the project and capture key summary information, in particular, the business need and the tie to the motivation for the project. It is very important during this time for the activity of stakeholder identification to take place and be done very effectively. This is your chance to get a strong start with all the stakeholders and understand their roles and responsibilities and come up with a management strategy for the stakeholders so you can guide their participation and manage their expectations throughout the project. Capturing this initial information about stakeholders is also very important, and it is done in a stakeholder register. Finally, a key event to kick off your project is the kickoff meeting.